Hello, fifth graders. This is Mr. James again, James again, and I am here uh, for day two of week 10. Today, we're going to finish reading about the judicial branch, and then following that, uh, we will take a little quiz, and then we'll talk about what your writing is going to look like today and for the rest of the week. So, we read through page 10 yesterday. We left off after learning about some of the notable chief justices. And so now we're going to continue on page 11. Please make sure you have your text or you are following along on the screen. The Courts in Action Most Americans only experience the U.S. judicial system through TV shows. Few real-life legal cases are so dramatic. Most never go to trial. And some take many years to resolve. Just because legal battles may not be exciting does not mean they're not important. Here are three examples of landmark Supreme Court cases. Tinker versus Des Moines Independent Community School District. In 1965, the parents of three teenagers sued a school district in Iowa. The students had been suspended for wearing black armbands to school. The armbands were meant to protest American involvement in the Vietnam War. The students argued that the school district violated their right to free speech by suspending them. In 1969, the Supreme Court sided with the students. The decision ruled that students have the right to free speech in school as long as it is not disruptive. Gideon versus Wainwright. In 1961, Clarence Gideon was arrested for breaking into a Florida pool hall and stealing. Gideon was too poor to hire a lawyer, and the court turned down his request for one. He was found guilty and sentenced to five years in prison. He wrote to the Supreme Court, arguing that the Constitution states that any person accused of a crime should have the help of a lawyer. The Supreme Court ruled in his favor. Gideon had a new trial and was found not guilty. From then on, all U.S. courts needed to provide a lawyer for people who could not afford one. Massachusetts versus Environmental Protection Agency. In 2003, Massachusetts and other states asked the United States Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, to regulate gases that play a part in global warming. The EPA refused. Massachusetts sued the EPA, saying it had a duty to regulate these gases under the Clean Air Act. This law was passed in 1963 to control pollution. The EPA argued that the law did not apply to these gases. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of the states by a vote of five to four. The EPA was then required to regulate these gases. Checks and balances. The judicial branch also provides checks and balances in the federal government. In the 1780s, the creators of the Constitution feared that one person or group might try to gain control of the government. To guard against that possibility, they built in checks and balances between the three branches. In other words, the executive branch, legislative branch, and judicial branch have ways to limit each other's powers. The executive and legislative branches mainly check the judicial branch by choosing federal judges. As head of the executive branch, it is the president's duty to choose these judges. Nominees must then be confirmed by the U.S. Senate, part of the legislative branch. This role gives the Senate the power to block the president's choices. In this way, the legislative branch can check both the judicial and executive branches. Once confirmed, federal judges serve for life. In other words, 
They cannot be fired by anyone in the executive or legislative branch. This is a check against the other two branches. It prevents leaders from firing judges for political reasons. Judges can be impeached by the U.S. Senate for illegal or dishonest behavior, however. This serves as another check on the judicial branch. Only 15 federal judges have been impeached, one of them a Supreme Court justice. Eight of the judges were ultimately found guilty and removed from office. Judicial review is another power of the judicial branch. The courts are able to review laws passed by the legislative branch or actions taken by the executive branch. If a law or action is found to violate the Constitution, the courts can strike it down. Lady Justice One of the symbols of the judicial branch is Lady Justice. She holds a set of scales and a sword, and she wears a blindfold. She represents the values of weighing facts and listening for the truth without prejudice. She also represents the power to protect when necessary. The creators of the Constitution knew that a strong justice system was important to a healthy society. It offers people peaceful ways to deal with conflicts. It also protects the basic rights of all Americans. The judicial branch acts as a check on the powers of the executive and legislative branches as well. The American justice system is not perfect. However, the principles of the judicial branch are well-founded and can result in true justice when used fairly. All right, that's where we're going to stop. So in your packet now, when we look into day two, notice that what we want you to do is complete your vocabulary cards with the word landmark, regulate, and resolve. Those definitions are found, remember, at the end of the text in the glossary, so you'll have no reason to not understand those definitions. So complete those cards, and then there is a quiz to complete afterwards. For writing today, remember you are writing about pizza and whether schools should serve pizza or not using the information that we have given to you, those additional articles that are in a separate stapled packet. Today, your job is to fill out the graphic organizer. Now, this graphic organizer that's on here already, remember this is about bees. You're not writing about bees, you're writing about pizza. So you have a blank one after the examples the reason you have the examples is to see exactly what it looks like to go and fill out a graphic organizer so this is a graphic organizer this is an example of what a final product would look like if it were about bees your job today is to complete the graphic organizer okay after that we don't have any uh more videos this week because there's no more reading but you're going to do your graphic organizer then you're going to write a rough draft then you're going to revise and edit and do a checklist. And then finally, at the end, you're going to write a final draft. So if you need any help or have any questions, please let me know. Uh, this You won't have any more videos this week. So uh, I expect phone calls or texts or emails if you need anything. Thanks so much. Looking forward.